Good morning and welcome to this service this morning which comes to you from the Keravigian circuit um, of the Methodist Church. As our days grow shorter and our nights longer, we who are people of faith turn to the symbol of Advent candles to proclaim our belief on the unquenchable light, Jesus Christ. In hopeful anticipation, we are preparing for the coming of the Prince of Peace. Let us listen to the word in the words of the prophet. We, we are open, open our, our hearts to, to the word in the words. As we begin our journey, we long for the one who opened heaven and came down to kindle a fire in our soul. The Bible reading is Isaiah chapter 64, verses 1 to 3. Why don't you tear down the sky apart and seek and come down? The mountains would see you and shake with fear. They would tremble like water boiling over a hot fire. Come and reveal your power to your enemies and make the nations tremble at your presence. There was a time when you came and did terrifying things that we did not expect. The mountains saw you and shook with fear. Amen. We who wait with anticipation feel hope rise up within us. And so we light this first candle and name it Hope. We sing the hymn from Singing the Faith 183. Praise to God who clears the way. And now let us all pray. Almighty God, as we begin this season of Advent, remind us again that in the midst of our darkness, you are bringing us light. And into our hectic lives, you are bringing peace. Turn our hearts again towards you. Make us ready to receive your Son, our Saviour, your greatest gift to us. We ask it in his name. Amen. And the prayer of confession. Father God, in Jesus you have called us to walk as children of the light. But we have preferred our own way, the way of darkness. We have not been willing to let the light of Christ into every part of our lives. And so we obscure your light and prevent it from reaching others. 
by your renewing love. Grant us an assurance of forgiveness and strength to live up to our calling through Jesus Christ our Lord, in whose name we ask it. Amen. And now we are going to have two Bible readings, first of all from the prophecy of Isaiah, read by Hilary, and then from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, and that is read by Haley. Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1 to 9. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord, high and exalted seated on a throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were seraphim, each with six wings. With two wings they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, and with two they were flying, and they were calling to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty, the whole earth is full of his glory. At the sound of their voices, the doorposts and thresholds shook, and the temple was filled with smoke. Woe to me, I cried, I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips, and my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Then one of the seraphim flew to me with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongues from the altar. With it, he touched my mouth and said, See, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, Here I am. Send me. He said, Go and tell this people, the ever hearing but never understanding, the ever seeing but never perceiving. This reading is taken from Corinthians chapter 1 verses 3 to 9. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give Thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind. Just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end, so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Now we sing another hymn, it's 178 from Singing of Faith. Long ago, prophets knew Christ would come, born a Jew. Long ago, prophets knew Christ would come, born a Jew. Come to make all things new, bear his people's birth.
our reading from Isaiah, we hear that the exiles who have been captive in Babylon have returned home to Jerusalem. This momentous event is seen as just one more of the mighty acts of God, performed for the benefit of his people. And it was something which had been predicted by earlier prophets. Yahweh God, their God, had acted once again. Now their hopes were high. But afterwards, nothing much seemed to happen. The temple in Jerusalem was still a ruin. And the excitement and the expectation of what could happen began to wane. This was not how things were expected to be. So the people break out into loud laments, and the prophet, on behalf of the people, cries out to God once more to intervene. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, so that the mountains would quake at your presence. In the Old Testament, when God puts in an appearance, often people out of sheer terror trembled and hid their faces. But their God had acted in the past, and now the people want God to act again. During the years they had been in exile, the people now returning home have had time to think. And they have recognised that the traumas that they have experienced were punishment for their unfaithfulness to God and for the sins which they had committed against him. It was these actions, they concluded, that had resulted in their separation from God. Nevertheless, the people are still prepared to acknowledge God as their father and therefore they appeal to him to do something to improve their situation. Even though they recognise that they are sinners, they ask God to help them in their current predicament. They say, now consider, we are all your people. And then in our other reading from Paul's first letter to the church at Corinth, it begins with the words, grace to you and peace. At that time, a Greek person who was not a Christian would have wished his correspondent grace. A Jew would have wished him peace. And Paul combines the two and prays that his readers should experience grace and peace. Professor C.K. Barrett saw both as coming from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. For Paul, grace meant God's loving nature and actions, which all Christians are completely dependent upon even today. Peace is the outcome of what God has done for us in Christ, that is, reconciling us to God through the death of Jesus on the cross. Peace, therefore, according to C.K. Barrett, is the total state of well-being to which we are admitted. So our two readings for this morning. They remind us that God is active, in all generations, active throughout the Old Testament period and into the time of the Christian Church. The Spirit of God was active in the Church at Corinth and is active in the Church now. We have come into the season of Advent, a season which ends with our celebration of God's greatest gift to his people, Jesus. It is through Jesus that we recognise the greatness of God's love for each one of us, a love which transforms, recreates, and and enables us to enjoy life 
in all its fullness. And this life is offered to us all. There are so many preparations, of course, to be made before we get to Christmas. I do hope that we will be ready to celebrate that amazingly generous gift of God at Christmas, Jesus, who shows us everything in a new light. If we love God with all our minds and strength, and love our neighbours as much as we love ourselves, then we will be ready for a wonderful time this Christmas and beyond. Thanks be to God. Amen. And now we come to our prayers of thanksgiving and intercession. Let us all pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that through long years you prepared the people to be your own. We praise you for the great figures in the Old Testament who brought us your words, telling us of the constancy of your love. We thank you most of all for the coming of Jesus Christ, your Son, in whom your love has reached its climax and its goal. We thank you that he is a perfect copy of your nature, that in him we see what you are truly like. We thank you for his birth and ministry, for his death and resurrection. We thank you for all the hope and strength and courage he gives, so that we may live as you intended. We offer you our thanks and praise, now and forever. Amen. And now our prayers of intercession. We pray in the joyful expectation of his coming to reign. We pray, come, Lord Jesus. Come to your world as King of the nations. We pray for the various countries in the world, for those places where there is discord and war and suffering and death. And we pray for the rulers, all those who have authority and power, who can bring those situations into peace. We pray that they will be open to the prompting of your spirit, that they will work to bring that peace which you wish for all. Before you, rulers will stand in silence. Come, Lord Jesus. Come to your church as Lord and Judge. We pray for the membership of our churches. Christians seeking to live by the light they have been given in the communities where they live. We pray for the leadership of our churches. Help us to live in the light of your coming and give us a longing to do your will. Come, Lord Jesus. Come to your people as Saviour and bearer of pain. We pray for those who are ill. We pray for those who mourn the loss of loved ones. We pray for those working in the hospitals and the health service. We pray for those who are wondering how they can make ends meet when money is short. Enfold us all in your love and mercy. Wipe away the tears of failure, fear and distress and set us free to serve you forever. Come, Lord Jesus. Amen.
and we say together the prayer that Jesus gave us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And now we're going to sing from Singing the Faith, the hymn number 167, Colours of Day. May Jesus fill our lives with his light and joy and peace. And the blessing of God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, remain with us always. Amen. Amen.